All right, next up, this is an interesting one for me. So somebody thought they had a silver bullet argument with me about my stance on human beings are supposed to eat meat and fat as our primary caloric intake. And they said, but hey, we uh, we produce a lot of this stuff called alumnase in our saliva. And because of that, we are excellent at digesting starches. And that means humans are supposed to eat starches. I don't know what they said in response to that because they said that their posts were being removed. I said, I'll listen to anything you have to say. And I'll tell you what I asked them to do in a second. Um, and I did see a comment come up that said my posts are being removed. And I said, I'm not doing it. I went and looked in like the uh, filtered spam shit. Nothing was in there except a bunch of porn and spam in Espanol. Um, go ahead, post. I still haven't seen anything. I haven't got an email telling me how to counter the argument. Um, but I said then, okay, fine. That's cool. Where did humans prior to modern agriculture, which is at best about 10,000 years old, and, and honestly, for the majority of the world, less than four to 5,000 years old, and for much of the world, I didn't say this, but for much of the world, Modern agriculture feeding society is like a thousand years old or less because there were tremendous numbers of hunter gatherers all over the world who, even when we had cities and civilizations and ag and, you know, grain storage and all that shit, they still didn't live in that world. They lived in their own little world, largely unaware of what the rest of us were doing. And other than the tropics around the equator with things like wild figs and stuff like that, the ability for a human being to live off of carbohydrates and starches was almost, it was almost impossible. It was almost impossible for most of human history. This is not, there's some things that are in my opinion. I always try to, here's my opinion over here. And you're welcome to tell me to shove my opinion up my ass. Informed or not, you're welcome to tell me that. And then there's facts. This is fact. If you go through the vast majority of this planet where humans occupied, prior to modern agriculture, which I'm not talking about combines. I'm talking about, yes, the ancient pharaohs and people out, you know, with scythes. And I'm, that's what I'm, when I say modern ag, I mean, what we think of, we plow the field, we plant the grain, we store the grain, we eat the grain. Prior to that, the vast majority of civilization had no access to easily available starches and carbohydrates throughout their year. They did not. Again, this is not opinion. So, where did they get the starch to develop this ability to live on starch if that's the case? The answer is they didn't. John, uh, I'm sorry, I was reading somebody's comment there, and I said, I was going to say John Wills. Uh, Ken Berry commented, I said, it's so we don't starve to death. And I think that's true, but I also think it's an oversimplification. So I, I, I think this, this is what I think. Most doctors have all the knowledge they need if they would think for themselves to put together what I'm about to tell you and realize, well, this is how it works. This, what they learned in medical school and their, their pre-med science and all that is all the information you need to understand how this works. And it's gonna, I'm going to revolve it around vitamin D. D3 is the single most important hormone. It's not a vitamin, a hormone in our body for immunity. It is the single most important hormone. I didn't say thing, hormone in our body for immunity. If you're vitamin D deficient, things that other humans easily fight off can kill you, like McCovey's. And even if it doesn't kill you, it can make you a lot sicker. And if we didn't have all the, the conveniences of the modern world, which is even something like a roof over your head every day and, and thermostatic control and clean water, being vitamin D deficient 5,000 years ago was probably a lot worse than being vitamin D deficient now. And they also didn't have little bottles of it where you could just take pills of it, right? So we know the D is very important. We also know fundamental reality, again, not opinion. Even if you're running around mostly naked all the time, first of all, you're not gonna in the winter because it's freaking cold. So humans will use that big brain to like get warm by producing something called clothing. But even if we ran around naked in the winter, outside of the tropics and subtropics, we produce very little D3. Very little D3. Okay. So why didn't everybody die? Why are we still here? How did our ancestors slog through all this shit to make it? The human body, and this is, this is factual, stores D3 like a battery stores energy in our fat cells. We evolved to put on fat in time of plenty and live off of it in time of 
thin. Just like a bear puts it on and goes to hibernation and slowly burns it, we just stay awake. We don't burmate or hibernate. You know, snakes and reptiles burmate, uh, bears and some other mammals hibernate. We go on with our lives, but we live off that fat. And when we're drawing from that fat, we are obtaining vitamin D3. Additionally, when we kill an animal with a lot of fat, that's where we can get dietary D3. So we have two sources in our winners for 70% of the planet of D3, our own fat and the fat of animals. And we know that the animals have less fat in the winter as well. And that fat doesn't store well. The best way to store fat is on the body and drawing from it. So why would we be able to digest starches? Because if you combine starch, which is sugar, make no mistake about it. You give me a pound of bread, a pound of potatoes, white potatoes, pound of white bread, pound of sugar. I'll put all three into a still and give you the same amount of ethyl alcohol. The only thing that can make ethyl alcohol is sugar. It's all sugar. If you combine fat and sugar, it is a recipe to swap the relationship between insulin and uh, glucagon and increase the fat you hold on your body, right? So we were we evolved to put fat on rapidly in the springs and summers when short duration carbohydrates were available and we could still kill something and eat it with it. So fat and sugar equals fat on body. Fat and protein minus sugar equals fat off body, which is exactly the way the human fat battery is supposed to work. Time of plenty, lots of available D3 from the form of solar radiation running around mostly naked because we didn't give a shit because nobody told us we weren't supposed to yet. Lots of D3 on a daily basis, more than we need. We store it like batteries in a solar system. Fall comes, we really have to now fully live off meat. There are no carbohydrates available. As we burn the fat, we release the D3. That's why we're good at digesting starch. So when Ken Berry said, so we don't starve to death, he was right. He just didn't explain it. There's your explanation. That is not my opinion. That is how biologically the human being existed for the majority of the time that human beings walked around under two feet on the planet. We know that that number now is way bigger than science says. We have conclusive evidence. There's a little opinion here because there's some contention about whether the evidence is evidence. But I've looked at the evidence and I think it's damn solid that human beings were here at least 300,000 years ago. If we go 300,000 minus 10,000, where we can even talk about living on agricultural crops, that's 290,000 years of evolution of the human being absent, easily available starch for more than 70% of the population. That is not freaking opinion. That is not opinion. That is biological and scientific fact. 